I was going to cover the Everest climbing season from everything that happened. Um, but a main focus was to sort of show how difficult it is to get up to the top of the mountain. When you're you're up there, you're completely by yourself. You know, you can, people can't come and you know get you down. It's the altitude makes it physically impossible to move yourself, let alone move anyone else as well. Getting from base camp to camp one, which is the first of four camps, was you know physically absolutely debilitating. By the time you get to the top, you are exhausted, and in fact, going along was just you know, you're falling from one leg to the other. The first part in climbing Everest is getting through the icefall and it's known as kind of one of the most dangerous bits because you know you have huge blocks of ice and this thing is it's moving, it's it's almost like it's alive. So you're you're physically completely empty and then at the same time you're trying to watch all these blocks of ice and watch everything moving around you. We arrived at camp one, I just put my bag inside the tent and then um, I stood out of the, the tent and everything started to move and it felt as though, it felt like the glacier was sliding off the mountain and we were sat on its back and it, the whole mountain just came to life. It's big lumps of ice that are the size of houses falling off these mountains and coming straight towards you. We could only see about five metres in front of us. It was a complete whiteout. So we knew that all of this ice was coming directly towards us. Um, behind us, we've got a crevasse that's hundreds of metres deep. And we were just expecting to either be killed by a lump of ice or thrown into the crevasse. Yeah, I've, I've come close to being shot before. I've come close to explosions going off, but that was... That was the closest I've come to accepting I'm going to die. The earthquake lasted 40 seconds by itself. And then the avalanche started. Welcome to have a look. All it's right. White. One below, one above. We were waiting for the avalanches for, you know, a minute and the rumble was just getting louder and louder and louder. Um, and there's just nothing you can do. It's this feeling of complete entrapment. You're at camp one on Mount Everest and then we learned that our home, base camp, everything we had anew and our safe haven and the part of the entire climb that was supposed to be safe and supposed to always be there so you know it's there has gone. Base camp is quite a long stretching piece of land and the bit in the middle is exactly where my camp was. That was my tent. And then there's two camps either side. And it was just gone, absolutely obliterated. And you, you go over the next ridge and it's worse, and over the next ridge and it's worse. And it just, you know, you're walking in a complete daze thinking, you know, this is my home, this is where I'm supposed to spend the next four weeks and nothing's left. Mountaineering is dangerous. We know that, and I came here to show that Everest is not a plaything for rich people. The mountain is supposed to be dangerous, but base camp is supposed to be the safe bit where trekkers can go. The power of this complete natural catastrophe is just jaw-dropping. Jaw